Due to the continuous destruction of the environment by human beings, the abnormal global climate has caused the arrival of a new ice age. Jack and two scientists were doing research, but the ice surface began to crack in a large area. With the help of each other, the three live in peace. A few days later, at a United Nations conference in New Delhi, Jack said there were signs of climate change as far back as 10,000 years ago. Perhaps global warming will cause the Earth to enter an ice age in the future, and if we do not try to remedy it now, then we will pay the price. Vice President Becker disagrees with Jack. Becker thinks Jack is just scarmongering. Facts have proved that the global climate change has already begun. First, there was heavy snow and chaos in India. Then there was hail in Tokyo, and the hail killed a man. Then there were tornadoes in the United States. When people read the news reports, they thought it was an isolated incident, so they didn't pay enough attention. At the same time, flocks of birds appeared in the sky above New York, and animals became restless. In the evening, Jack received a call from Professor Rapson of the Observation Center. Rapson found an ocean-sounding buoy recording a 13-degree drop in water temperature. Rapson thought it was just a glitch, but four more buoys were added. Immediately afterwards, a tornado warning was issued in Los Angeles. The tornado was so powerful that it destroyed buildings wherever it went. The National Weather Service called an emergency meeting at a time when the weather forecasting system was completely disabled. Jack recommends taking long-term precautions. Jack hopes that Nestor will allow him to use computers to build weather forecast models. Nestor gave Jack 48 hours. Jack uses the program to calculate that the weather will change dramatically in 6 to 8 weeks. Jack reported the situation to Becker and recommended an emergency evacuation of the states. Vice President Becker rejects Jack's proposal. Then Jack called his son Sam and told him to hurry home because Sam went to New York with his classmates. On the other side, three helicopters were suddenly frozen while flying and crashed on the snow. A surviving pilot was also frozen into an ice sculpture. Professor Rapson notified Jack immediately and told him that the temperature in Scotland had dropped to tens of degrees below zero and was still falling. Rapson wanted Jack to analyze their data right away. After analyzing the data, Jack learned that it was the rotation of the storm that pulled down the cold air. And there are three storms that will cover the globe in a few days. When the storm is over, mankind will enter a new ice age. Jack knew they had missed the best time to evacuate. At the same time, the stagnant water in New York is getting worse, and traffic has been paralyzed. Sam and his party walked to the high-lying library. At this time, the flood rushed straight to New York City, and everyone in the city was running away. At this moment, people felt the doomsday in their hearts. When going to the library, Laura's leg was scratched, unaware of the coming flood. After seeing Laura's situation, Sam rushed into the water and rescued Laura. But at this time, the disaster in New York was terrible, and the signal of mobile phones was cut off. So Sam used the library's payphone to contact his father. Jack tells Sam on the phone that the storm in New York is going to turn into a big snowstorm. The cold air in the eye of the storm can freeze people to death, and Jack tells Sam not to go out. Jack immediately prepared his equipment and rushed to New York to rescue Sam. Nestor hopes that Jack will report the current situation to Vice President Becker before leaving. Jack knew Vice President Becker didn't necessarily believe what he said. Jack makes a final attempt. Jack told everyone at the meeting that the global climate will undergo a large-scale change, and the super snowstorm will last for about 7 to 10 days. After the blizzard stops, the entire northern hemisphere will be covered in ice and snow. Jack suggested moving the people from the south to Mexico. The masses in the northern region have missed the opportunity to evacuate. At this time, Vice President Becker still did not agree with Jack's proposal. President Blake decided to implement Jack's proposal after careful consideration. At this time, there was a blizzard in New York after the flood, and the people in the library were preparing to head south. Sam reminded everyone that the severe cold outside would freeze people to death. Everyone should stay indoors to keep warm until the severe cold passes, but they don't believe Sam's words. Under the leadership of the police, a large number of survivors began to migrate south. Only Sam's friends and a handful of people remained. At the same time, a large number of Americans flocked to Mexico to escape the snowstorm. But the Mexican government sealed the border, making President Blake promise to forgive all debts. Mexico agreed to open the passage. On the other hand, Jack started the road to save Sam with the help of two friends. At this time, the road surface could not allow cars to pass, and the three of them walked on foot. In the snowstorm, the blizzard has covered buildings. When the three were walking on the roof of the mall, the glass on the roof suddenly shattered, causing Harris to fall. When Jack and Jason pulled Harris up, Harris saw the glass start to crack, and Harris chose to cut the rope to sacrifice himself. The people left in the library began to burn books to keep warm. Sam expresses his love to Laura in front of the fire. The wisdom and bravery shown by Sam made Laura fall in love with him. Laura developed a high fever because of an infected leg wound, and only antibiotics could save Laura. 
At this time, Sam thought that there must be medicine in the freighter, and the other two students also decided to go with Sam. After they found the medicine in the infirmary, they planned to find some food to take back. When they returned, they encountered hungry wolves looking for food. Sam lowers the wolf into a room, closes the door and escapes. At this time, the eye of the storm had already hit, and all the buildings were frozen. Jack immediately took the unconscious Jason into the room. Sam, who was about to return to the library, also noticed the arrival of the eye of the storm. Sam and his two companions fled immediately. The three returned to the library at the last moment. After a long time, Jack and Jason set foot on the trip again. People who were frozen to death can be seen everywhere on the road, and the whole New York has also been covered by blizzard. When Jack and Jason came to the library, the place had been covered by heavy snow, leaving only the roof exposed. After Jack and Jason entered the library, they found a door with a light shining through it. After Jack pushed open the door, he saw several people sleeping by the fire. Jack was thrilled too, see that Sam was safe and well. The father and son hugged each other tightly. After Vice President Becker received Jack's message, he sent a helicopter to New York for rescue. Survivors everywhere have also been rescued by the military. At this time, in the distant sky, the storm has dissipated. Thus ended a global catastrophe. How insignificant human beings are before the power of nature. Human beings have been squandering natural resources, and this disaster is a warning to human beings. Hope we treat the environment well and protect the homeland of mankind together.